My name is Greg and I wanted to make a video on a project I've been working on that allows you to customize what jingle is played by the Steam Controller when it starts up and it shuts down. So, what do I mean by that? Well, we have a PC running the Steam operating system. I have a Steam Controller. Turn it on. And it plays a little jingle, a little song, to kind of let you know that it started up. Um, so by default, there are about 14 different presets you can choose from. Um, and that allows you some customization options, but I wanted to see if I could push things a little farther than that. So, let me shut this down and explain how we do that. And there's your shutdown song. Alright. So, we're going to need a computer for this. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is download essentially a bunch of song files. So the song format that I've decided to use for this project is a file format called Music XML. Um, it's essentially a way of conveying and sharing sheet music. There's a lot out there that people have already done and shared freely, so I thought that that would work great. It's also easy to convert to. Uh, I'd recommend looking up the program MuseScore, which I will link down below. They also have kind of a sister website where people share their creations. Uh, that's where I've pretty much gotten all of my test data for this project. So, all right, next thing we need to do is prep the controller. So, let's get a good angle on this and try to keep everything in focus. You're going to need your USB cable that came with the Steam controller. One end goes into your computer. The other end's going to go into your controller. However, make sure that you are holding down the right trigger when you plug in your controller. And what this is going to do is put it in programming mode. And you can know this worked because the LED did not turn on. And also, if we look on the computer here, we now have a drive called CRP disabled. So that allows us to access the firmware. All right. So next thing you need to do is you're make sure that you've cloned or downloaded the Git repo. Um, and that's what I'm, where I am here. So I'm going to go into Jingle bin, and this is where I'm going to create a backup for the firmware that is on there right now. So this is key and important because we're going to want to restore the controller back to its original firmware. Um, so yeah, so on a Mac you do cat volume CRP disable firmware, and I will call this backup.bin. Slightly different process on Windows and Linux. There are details in the readmes up on GitHub. And then we're going to want to download this other firmware, OpenSteamController.bin, onto the controller. Um, this is just a pre-built version of the OpenSteamController firmware. If you want to rebuild it, the source is in here. Um, but this was just hopefully going to save people some time. All right, so that's downloaded. Got to make sure that we properly eject. All right, now the Steam Controller should be updated. We want to power cycle it, so remove USB, plug it back in, and the LED comes on, but no jingle is played, so that's a good sign that you've done everything right, and we are running the new firmware. Next thing we're going to want to do is run the Steam Controller con Jingle Converter GUI. Again, all the source is in GitHub. Link is down below. Um, it's built through Qt, so you're going to need to download Qt Creator. There are uh, further details in the README for how to do that. So, we run the GUI and we try to get this camera to focus. There we go. Alright. Um, pretty simple GUI, kind of ugly, but I am not a UI designer, so I apologize in advance. So we're going to click the Browse button. We're going to go to where we've downloaded all our music XML files, and let's start with Mario, because everyone knows Mario. We click Convert. We have Mario selected over here, and then we have a whole bunch of configuration options. So there's beats per minute, how fast the song plays, note intensity, that is essentially how intense the haptics vibrate. Um, I put this configuration option in there because sometimes it can kind of rattle the whole controller and it just sounds bad. Um, so let's knock that down. Octave adjust allows you to adjust the relative frequency of all the notes played. Start and end measure allows you to adjust how much of the song is going to be played. 
Um, so for Mario, I'll just play the first three measures. Left and right channel source allow you to choose which parts of the song get played. Sometimes you have essentially more than one part or voice. Um, in this case, we have two, so I'll just put one on each channel. And lastly, there is chord select. So for certain parts, there are chords, which are notes that have multiple frequencies. We can really only play one. This allows you to select which one, where zero is the highest frequency note in the chord, and then the other ones are just kind of progressively lower. All right, and we've maintained focus on the camera. We can still kind of see things. That's always good and important. Um, so jingle memory used. This is important because you can only put so much data onto the controller. This lets you track it, um, and it will prevent you from downloading it if you're trying to download too much data. And then the last thing, or not last thing, but the next thing is we want to select the serial port we're going to communicate with. So when you plug in the Steam controller with this custom firmware on it, it shows up as a serial port. On Mac, it's called TTY USB modem 1781. On Linux, it's like TTY ACM0. On Windows, it's like COM3, or it's going to be some random communication port number. Um, but... Yeah, so select that, then once you have it selected, configured, you can do a test play by clicking play jingle. Alright, so that sounds pretty good. Um, and then let's load up a couple other jingles, and then these will all get downloaded kind of in place of the default ones, and I'll show how that all kind of works in a minute. Alright, so let's say that we wanted to do the final countdown. We'll convert that, knock down our note intensity on this one. Just to use the first two measures. We'll select our right and left channel sources. Test play. All right, that sounds all right. And just for good measure, I'm gonna kind of quickly go through here and just put a couple more. All right, three channel. Let's convert that. There's two measures, sure, I'll put that down. Display. Alright, and then one last song, why not? Oh, let's do Final Fantasy's kind of victory fanfare thing, sure. And I think we only need the first two. Uh, let's see how this sounds. Alright, so that works pretty good. So we've got four songs on here. You can see we're not using up all the memory. Um, but we're just going to kind of move forward for the sake of time. So, four songs are selected, and now we want to actually save it to the controller. That's what this Save DE prom does. So, click on that. It'll take a minute. And we'll get a message telling us that yes, it did save the EEPROM, everything was successful. There's also a clear EEPROM, so if you ever want to restore your controller to not have these custom jingles and use the default ones that come with the system, set this all back up, click clear, you'll get a message saying, you know, cleared successfully, and then you should be able to restore your firmware and be back to normal. So, speaking of restoring firmware, that's our next step. So, let's close down the GUI, and let's go back to where we've saved our backup firmware. That's right here. We're going to put the controller back into programming mode. So again, remove power to power it down. Hold down the right trigger and plug in. And we are in programming mode and we can see that our drive is back. All right, so now this time we're going to cap the backup dot bin to volume CRP disabled firmware dot bin. Done. We're going to eject to make sure that everything writes correctly. And we're going to unplug our controller and now we can close the laptop. And we're going to be transitioning back to looking at SteamOS. So we're going to start up the controller like we did before. And now it plays our custom songs. Alright, so we can go down to configuration, click on that, go to preferences, and like we did before, we can choose what songs we want at start up and shut down. Um, so yes. So let's say we'll start with Mario, because that was the first one in the list, and then I don't remember what the order was on the other two, so let's try a couple. That was the Me channel. And that was Final Fantasy. So 
when you don't put enough songs on there, you can see there's a lot more listed here than there actually are. They're just going to all go to the last one, which I believe is Final Fantasy. Yeah, okay. So we've configured it to play Final Fantasy when it shuts down. Mario, when it starts up, we'll submit. Now just let's test that it works. So turn off controller. Plays Final Fantasy. We'll start it back up. Should play Mario. And it does. And so... That's about all I got for the video. Hope you found it interesting. Um, yeah, if you have any issues trying to use any of this, please make issues on GitHub, and hopefully we can make this experience as painless as possible. All right, thanks for watching.